Have you given any thought to why horror is something people willingly subject themselves to? <laughs> I think it's fun. I think uh, people enjoy seeing a horror film or reading a, a scary book uh, the way they enjoy going into a laugh in the dark or on a roller coaster ride. Mm -hmm. You go in knowing, or you go in with high expectations. And I think the ones that work on that audience are the ones that really pay off. In other words, the ones that give you that little zets and yeah. give you that involuntary response reaction to it that you yeah. went in hoping to get. I think something else that uh, horror does is society gives points, you know, for good emotional behavior. So we get points for exercising those emotional muscles that society approves of, love, friendship, uh, loyalty, uh, humor, that sort of thing. But for every one of those good emotions, we have a dark one as well. We have fear, we have aggressiveness, we have uh, anger, we all have, uh, I suppose, urges that sometimes tend towards sadism, that sort of thing. And a horror story or a, a horror movie gives us a chance to uh, exercise that side in a comparatively harmless way. Mm -hmm. Exorcised? Exorcised. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what, do, do, you, do you fellows happen to specialize in this field and could just as easily be in another one? Um, or if not, then mustn't you be weird in some way? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know, I work at a car wash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I really wonder about that. I was trying to think of a tactful way to put it. But, uh. no, I, was, I don't think we're any more weird I think than Steve the people weird. who <laughs> enjoy the, the things we produce. I think it's the mm -hmm. same thing. We're just producers and they're consumers, but we're subject to the same emotions and working with but There has them. to be some real reason that you're in this field and not another one. Well, I, was, I, I think was. you have a predilection toward it. Yeah. Ira Levin and I discovered that as children, we we entertain other children by telling ghost stories to them. Mm -hmm. And so it was yeah. there, and uh, I think I made mine up, but I'm sure he made his up. And it was uh, just a way of exercising our imaginations that we came to very young. Mm -hmm. I was warped as a child. <laughs> uh, There's a lot of horror comics in my past, and a lot of, uh, of horror movies, and yeah. uh, that sort of thing. And uh, it did, it, it warped me as a kid. And, uh, but seriously? I, I, yeah, 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 seriously, uh, warped me. And uh, the thing is, I think that, uh, see, they know. Uh, <laughs> uh, in the world as it is today, though, I think if you don't have a few warps in your record, you can't get along. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of the uh, great appeals that uh, the horror story has. There's been a lot of uh, analysis, a mm -hmm. lot of it almost ludicrous, it seems to me, about horror in the wake of uh, the big hits like uh, George's Dawn of the Dead and, and Ghost Story and The Shining and all of that sort of thing. And, and really, I think what a lot of it is is a sort of harmless blow-off for anxieties and bad feelings. Yeah. Where would we have seen your warpedness if we'd known you uh, earlier <laughs> before you well, began? I, I get rid of most of it through this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, people say, well, do you have bad dreams? And the answer is no, I give them all to somebody else. I sleep well. <laughs> uh, and it works that way for the writer, I think, or the filmmaker as well, I guess. There's a kind of blow off. And uh, If you didn't have that blow off, would you be haunting graveyards and uh, <laughs> uh, doing uh, this? Uh, graveyards <laughs> might be haunting you. <laughs> 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 I, I, well. think that, I think you're tapping another, another emotion. I mean, I, I, I've often felt that uh, to some extent with me it was accident. There were genre films that I loved of all different types. I loved mm -hmm. jungle movies. Yeah. And had my first hit been a jungle movie, I might be a great jungle movie man. <laughs> but uh, so to, to that extent, it was accidental. And, um, uh, uh, but it's, I think there's a list of those involuntary emotions. Uh, laughter, if you can make an audience laugh, cry, startle, uh -huh. uh, those are the things that you're really trying to do and that's what you're tr sort of honing uh, your work down to try to accomplish, to get that involuntary response out and uh, it's those involuntary responses that make people say, gee, that was, that was great. Yeah. But when people say about Salem's Lot, geez, I loved it, they're, they're basically saying it scared the hell out of me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's very, it's clear cut. They don't, they, you know, it's, a, it's basically a different response that you get from a reader that read Salem's Lot or Rosemary's Baby than you get from a reader that read The Winds of War. When they, if mm -hmm. you ask someone, did you like The Winds of War, they'll go into 10 minutes about, 
you know, but if you ask someone, did you like Rosemary's Baby, they, they, what they immediately respond to is, yeah, it scared me. Yeah. What they mean is yeah. it scared me. Yeah, but I, <laughs> um, I, I think it goes beyond that. I really do. And that when people say that I love Salem's Lot, I think also, besides the wonderful, wonderful scares, uh, I think they're saying that the scares worked because they, they felt involved at a gut level with the people mm -hmm. and that the characters convinced them. And when they say they like Rosemary's Baby, the same is true, and they responded also to the satire. Because mm -hmm. horror has a great, it offers great entree to uh, social observation and to satire, mm -hmm. I think. There's a lot of fun in it. Yeah. Yeah. There's that uh, wonderful moment in, in Kubrick's film where uh, Nicholson looks through the door and says, here's Johnny. My <laughs> kids run around and say that now. You know? <laughs> I have a three-year-old who in goes around. Yeah, yeah. I have a three-year-old boy who goes around saying, Daddy's not here now. <laughs> <laughs> the little finger thing. It's very funny. Yeah. Another thing. He's that, not uh, warped then. Uh, uh, he's, of course he's warped. He's, yeah. warped. Yeah, he's, warped. <laughs> he's very warped. Uh, one of the things that all these genres do, I responded to what George said about if his first hit had been a jungle picture, because you take all of these things and it, it's, they're, they're genres. There's horror, there's, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, the crime picture, my God, can this be the end of Rico, uh, <laughs> jungle pictures, uh, all of these things. And what all this genre fiction does, mysteries, is they make the writer or the filmmaker tell a real story. You know, and I think in a lot of ways you just gravitate toward that idea of story. Mm -hmm. You want to tell, tell tales. That's very important, I think. I yeah. think that's the yeah. heart of it, really. That there's, a, that, there's a, that there's a story which can engulf you and grab your lapels the way a uh, fairy tale did when you were six years old. And you can't and tell a story. You can't tell a story. I mean, you can't scare anybody unless there's a story unless there's and a characters for them to be involved in. Sure. Yeah. Right. Scares so don't exist in a, in a vacuum. So you're forced to telling the story, yeah. as you're saying. Yeah. Even as just now, that clipboard moved and no one was near it. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I was near it. <laughs> oh, you did that. Oh, okay, I feel better then. I don't know what this is relevant to, but Groucho Marx once in a Hollywood dinner introduced Spider Man as the only man um, who had never made a horror movie intentionally. <laughs> 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 when those of you here who didn't write The Shining read it, were you, did it scare you? Oh, I was terrified yeah. by it. I yeah. thought it was a great book, and it just uh, it oh. bowled me over, and I was just I pay him to say scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's oh. great. <laughs> it's uh, there are many people who feel that that book has given them the scare of their lives, and uh, it's, yeah. uh, it's funny because so. when an interviewer says to me, "Well, what scares you?" You know, this is one of the questions you come up against. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit flabbergasted because my immediate response is, "Let's try to think of something that that doesn't scare me." Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, in, in, in one yeah. form or another. Uh -huh. uh, I can remember, for instance, my mother. When I was just a, a little kid, they used to have these machines in shoe stores, and you looked down <laughs> into the machine, and you saw your bones inside it, you know, in your shoes. And, yes. And uh, I had my feet in one of those machines, and uh, she gave a scream and said, uh, don't do that. that. That will give you cancer. <laughs> and for weeks after, I would look at my feet to see if they'd started to rot yet, <laughs> you know. And uh, I put that in a book, and I think one of the things that you do after a while is you you begin to search out the things that scared you the most and try to get rid of them, you know. That's, that's interesting because uh, obviously our first uh, horrors come in childhood exactly. in various ways. Uh, and and um, whether it's the older kid who convinces you that a bogeyman sure. lives in mm -hmm. the yeah. uh, building that really houses a pump or something, <laughs> uh, or whatever it is. And I wondered, in, in, maybe it'd be interesting to learn in each of your cases if you had ones like that that you remember that were striking or Maybe you were unusually susceptible as kids? Uh. I was pretty susceptible. But I, I, in addition to uh, the buggy man outside the window, I was uh, susceptible to war scares. I remember propaganda comic books mm -hmm. and things like that that scared the hell out of me. And I remember John Cameron Swayze announcing that the Russians had the bomb, you know, from in, when I was uh, yeah. <clears throat> first watching the tube. Those were the things that got to me. And I remember the, the bombers flying over the Bronx where I grew up, and blackouts and things like that. Yes. And those scared the hell out of me, inordinately, I think. I was scared by those uh, ingeniously racist posters that showed Japanese with rat bodies coming mm -hmm. out of sewers. <laughs> right, wow. <laughs> remember those during the war yeah, in the yeah. post I've office? Well, these comic books had the, people uh, bursting into homes and yeah. terrorizing the kids and eventually shooting everybody in the place yeah. while Dad was off at work. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, 
those things scared the hell out of me, which is maybe why I th that, uh, at least in my, with my zombie films, I, I have uh, a kind of a socio-political uh, underbelly in them, mm -hmm. you know? In other words, I find it, I don't know if I find it necessarily frivolous to just go out and be scared. I don't really, because I'm looking forward to uh, mm. Creep Show, which is a project that yeah. we're going to do together, and uh, which is just very scare. Frivolous. Yeah, just it, get in there and try scare people. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. <laughs> so, Levin, were you scared? Do you remember as a kid I've what been scared here you? I'm trying to think, but I don't recall being scared at all. I think I was a very brave kid. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> Whereas now you're scared. Now I'm scared <laughs> of everything. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, I remember um, never being afraid of the dark. I don't know what people were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I never understood when sometimes other kids had to sleep with the lights on. Um, I had to have a light. Did you? Yeah. What did you think would get you if the light went on? I didn't even really want to consider it, but uh, <laughs> yeah. what it might be. But I was sure that... Uh, uh, I would see it before it got me and that uh, probably my mind would crack open. I think as a kid I was really, you know, uh, worried a lot about going over the high side and into banana land and never getting back. I was very afraid of that. As a kid it wasn't so much being grabbed by something from the closet so much as seeing it sort of coming toward me, you know, mm -hmm. and knowing there'd be no escape. Mm -hmm. uh, what? It turned out to be my father-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> Your father-in-law? <laughs> Good of you to admit that. Uh, can you remember when you uh, first read something that, that made your hair stand up? Oh, I can remember something. I remember this great uh, Bennett Surf anthology that I got when I was about 10 called Great Tales of Terror and the Supernatural. And I really burrowed into that book, and there was so, some of it was so scary I could, I you know, I could barely read it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I, remember. <laughs> <laughs> I was prompted to go read the H.G. Wells version of uh, War of the Worlds after seeing the 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 movie. Mm. And I uh, love that film. <clears throat> when I was a kid. Yeah. yeah, and the the description in Wells, which of course the, the Wells was at first disappointing because it was nothing like the movie but mm -hmm. then i started to get into that and the description of the aliens in that in uh in that was the first thing that really scared me on mm -hmm. the printed page i that was dracula that's dracula yeah right sure. Dracula. sure sure you mean the movie Scares. no the book the book, the book? Yeah. yeah i never read that oh, as a kid a, that's a great thriller yeah. Yeah. uh much scarier than any of the movie versions today. Yeah. It is, isn't it? Yes, there are yeah. wonderful yeah. things in the book. You wonder why they didn't they do it for, the, for the movie. There's a wonderful scene of that um, captainless boat comes ashore yes. and a dog is seen to leap off. Mm -hmm. and go into, right. Yeah. yeah. Which, uh, all those incidents have been included one time or another. Mm -hmm. they, they, They've never the all been put together, I don't think, no. in, in the one Jordan film. The Jordan version was pretty true to that content. Was, yeah, I but thought that was the best. Was, yeah. Mood. There was a uh, there was an interesting one with uh, Palance. A couple I, of I years heard before that was good. I've never, never seen that one. Now the the one that you were talking about was the one that was the PBS one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Louis that Jordan. was a very stylish. That was yeah. Louis Jordan. Yeah, yeah that was a nice count. Do, do you envy people who have seen ghosts as I do? <laughs> I don't. No, <laughs> not at all. No. Uh, I do. I, I would wonder if, if, for any reason, you had gone out of your way to stay overnight in <laughs> Longleat or one of those well-known places. We go out of our way not to. I <laughs> places. I, I really envy people who've seen them. I'm, I can do without seeing a UFO, but I certainly <laughs> would like to see a ghost. Uh, I'd like well, to see a UFO. Yeah, I'd like. To see yeah, a UFO. I'd rather see a UFO. I think. <laughs> What? And a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> How about a ghost? <laughs> 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 no, that's that's the but you see, in our business, if we saw one of those things, we'd never tell anyway because they just say, "Oh, well, it was strong." <laughs> that's right. That. Mm -hmm. He's got a coming out. Yeah. <laughs> sure.